Back in 2015, um, Masipumelele community was facing a huge challenge. They were protesting and the student and the workers, they were not allowed to leave Masi and the taxis were not going. In fact, there was no transport at all. People were shooting, burning tires, even replacing people. So that was, that was very terrible for us and we were writing our exams. We couldn't even write exams properly because like I remember when we had to write computer, we couldn't go out so we had to be given another day to write computer. A young student at the time called Zikona sent a message saying, Kathy, there are riots in Masipumalele. I don't know what to do. We can't, I can't get to the college for my exams. They were traumatized to start off with um, because of what was happening and because of the fact that they were scared because it was the external exams. Um, it was just um, so um, traumatizing for them because they didn't know what else to do. In Masi there's only one main entrance and then that main entrance was blocked. And then um, I remember Mrs. Ma uh, Mrs. Shepard calling me in the office um, that Mr. Godwin is going to come and then we have to go to, um, to Masi to, to speak to the community. For myself I was so scared. There were so many stakeholders, from the police to the community leaders to the college itself. So we said they we listen to their story and then they told us they were actually protecting the community from the drugs and from all the illegal dealings and etc. etc. And so we had to explain to them the situation and what impact is it going to have on the students. It was hard for us to go to school. We, so we sometimes use the back entrance to come to college and um, they were just shooting everywhere, so it was a matter of safety. And then they did manage to listen to us and then we came to an agreement that um, the students will have to show some sort of an identity in order for them to know that these are the students for them to leave. Now, but then because they were kind of scared for, for the, you know, the trauma that the students were experiencing to go back in and forth of mass because they didn't know what was going to happen and etc, etc. So um, that's when now the college, you know, with the help of Alpha and other lecturers as well as management, they they decided that I mean, know we put away there and then if we can find accommodation so that they can find environment that can be conducive for them as learners. At the end of the day we had 70 plus students in the hall all wanting beds. I went straight on to Facebook, onto South Peninsula Mums and other Facebook local community and I just put urgent messages out we need host families. Fisher Campus, we started in 2009 and we've got a fantastic relationship with the community here. And when that saga happened in terms of the Masi protesting, um, our families, the community of Fishuk and uh, Simonstown and Clow Valley, they just all reached out and supported us in, in, in that traumatized moment. What happened was that the college hosted us with a family. So from the day that you wrote exams up until the last day, and then I felt safe because I was able to write my exams and I passed successfully. When, when we reached out to those communities, they came in numbers. They came and they supported us. It went out on social media. And within hours, 63 students were placed in different houses. And that was just amazing. People who had never had anything to do with the college took in the students. And I think some very valuable and, and long-lasting friendships were made. The family was so friendly and I felt safe. They treated us like their own children and that gave me that chance to prepare well for my exams and not stressing about what's happening in Marcy. Those families picked up our students, they dropped them, they supported them throughout almost for a month and a half by feeding our kids and by dropping them in the morning, picking them up in the afternoon giving them a safe space to study and to have you know, a conducive area for them to learn and to, and to feel the trust and, and safetyness. What it showed to me personally was the open-heartedness of complete strangers who opened their homes, especially as we had some um, students who had babies. They were so kind, so I felt comfortable as well. I felt safe at the home and I could pass my exams. I managed to pass well all my subjects and the college was so helpful towards us and yeah, I'm very grateful for what they did and I would like to thank um, the Fisher community for helping us and making that happen.
I think for the whole of the community it was a huge learning experience and it was not only the students who benefited, I think the community as well had an education process. It has changed and more specifically about the way that I feel about the Falls Bay College because it helped me because if it wasn't for, for it, I don't know what I would have done, maybe I would have failed. Our results were fantastic, it was excellent in 2015. And what this community has done for our students, not a small story, it's actually very big. Because we are Rainbow Nation and it's not about the colour of your skin or the race or the gender, it's who you are. It's about caring for one another and the, the whole South Peninsula community has done that for us. And I think that is the goodness of all South Africans. I think as South Africans, as a community, when when it comes to the crunch, we come together. I think it, it, we are in a time where it's, it's a time of building and uh, we need to, to change attitudes and build relationships. And this was a wonderful opportunity, I think. <laughs>